title of our notes are Neutralization by Titration. I'm going to give you a very brief introduction to um, a laboratory method called titration. Tomorrow we're going we're gonna to do an acid-base titration in class. Volumetric analysis determines the amount of a particular substance by utilizing a method we call a titration. So when I say the amount of a certain substance, I'm really talking about the molarity, the unknown concentration of a solution. So we utilize volumetric analysis to determine um, the unknown concentration of a solution. And we do this by a, tri uh, by a titration. So what is a titration? Well, a titration involves the delivery of a measured volume, very important, a measured volume of a solution of known concentration, which we call the titrant, into a solution of the substance that's being analyzed, also known as the analyte. And it is the analyte concentration that we do not know, that we are trying to determine by doing the, the titration. In all cases, the titrant reacts with the analyte in a known manner. We will be doing an acid-base titration in class tomorrow, but there are also redox titrations or precipitation titrations as well. Um, so this this volumetric analysis we can use in all sorts of contexts, but what we're going to do tomorrow is an acid-base titration, right? So where we've got an acid plus a base, and like we know now. Acid plus base gives us water plus salt. Okay, and we know in this acid-base reaction that they are reacting in a one-to-one -one mole ratio, which is extremely important for the next part of this, which is the point in the titration where enough titrant has been added to react exactly with the analyte is called the equivalence point or the stoichiometric point. Okay, so the equivalence point. That is the point where we have added exactly the same number of moles of titrant as there is analyte. Okay, so they are equivalent. The number of moles of titrant and the moles of analyte. At the equivalence point, the two of them are equal. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this that is really, really important, and that is, in this situation, we've got acetic, plus sodium hydroxide gives us um, sodium acetate plus water, okay? Water plus salt. Now, at the equivalence point, we have added exactly the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that are equal to the number of moles of acetic acid that we are analyzing. So at that point, at equivalence, and this is really important for later in the school year, not for now, but for later. So all I'm doing is creating a neural pathway for you. At equivalence, moles of base is equal to moles of acid. And that means that in the beaker, at equivalence,
because we have exactly the same number of moles as this. Okay, we have the stoichiometric ratio. The acid and the base have completely combined with each other. So, is there any acid or base left in the beaker? No. At equivalence, moles of base equals moles of acid, and the only thing that's in the beaker at equivalence is water and salt, okay? Because we have reached the stoichiometric ratio at that point. Equal moles to equal moles, there's neither of the reactant left. And all there is at equivalence is salt and water. So at equivalence, the moles of base equal moles of acid, thus, the only thing in the beaker, only um, chemicals in the beaker, are salt and water. Okay, so important, important piece of information for later. Okay. Well, how do we know? How do we know when we have added exactly the stoichiometric ratio of titrant to analyt? How do we know we've reached the equivalence point or the stoichiometric ratio? Okay, we don't measure temperature to tell us that we have reached the stoichiometric ratio. When we're doing acid-base titrations, what we do is we utilize something called an indicator. And so this point, this, this equivalence point or stoichiometric point, is often marked by an indicator. A substance added at the beginning of the titration that changes color at or very near the equivalence point or the stoichiometric point. The point where the indicator actually changes color is called the end point. Okay, and the goal in a titration is to choose an indicator so that the end point, that is where the indicator changes color, occurs exactly at the equivalence point between the two reactants. Tomorrow, when we do the lab, we will, I will continuously refer back to this vocabulary to um, help you in trying to internalize these terms and understand where these terms are coming from. But for now, I think that is plenty of information.